All right, I see a lot of loading animations in Webflow that are just timed animations on page load. Now here we've got a bunch of assets loading and I've actually throttled the performance here to fast 3G. And we can see that my images are taking some time to load here to download. And in the console, we're loading each image as it's coming in and being fully loaded. And we're actually setting the progress of the progress bar to mimic the percentage. So like 89% would be 41 divided by 47 or something like that. And then when the loading animation is finished, it goes away and everything is revealed. So let's hop into how to do that in Webflow. We're gonna be using GSAP in the images loaded library today. Hey there, Web Bay. So before we get started, let's actually head back to the network tab here in our inspector. And I'm gonna come back to no throttling. And what's cool about the internet is that if I now come to the console and refresh, it's gonna load super fast because everything is cached. Actually, 537 milliseconds is still not that fast. If I refresh again, we're going to see it's almost in half and refresh again, almost in half again. So what's going on here? If I go back to the network tab and inspect one of these images, we'll start to see if we look in the headers here, there's this X cache and we have a hit from CloudFront. So what this is saying is that Webflow is actually using AWS with CloudFront to store our assets. Now our assets are stored at this location right here, assetsglobal.websitefiles.com slash whatever. And then that is being cached using AWS, which has a CloudFront CDN in front of it. So it's getting a hit from CloudFront and that's how things are starting to load so fast. So keep in mind that as we build this animation, your animation may get super fast. So you might wanna actually put something in there to slow it down, but we'll get into that in just a second. So let's go ahead and hop into this build. Now in Webflow, I have a container and then a grid layout and then just a bunch of images inside of that grid all the way down. And that's just to try to create as much loading of images as I can. I think there's 47 here. Now to build a simple loader, we can just drop a div block on here. And it, of course it went all the way to the bottom. So let's bring it up right here. And I'm gonna call this loader wrap, just like that. And then this will get a height of 100 dynamic viewport heights. And I'm going to set it to position fixed so that it's on top of everything. So now we can go ahead and give it a background color. We'll just do full black. And we also need some width to this thing. So we'll set it to 100%. So now that's covering everything. And I'm also going to give it display flex and just center everything so that this is really easy. Now let's go ahead and drop in our percentage number and the loading bar. So I'm gonna use command K and we'll just drop in a text block just like this. And this will just set at 1% to start. And we'll call this loader text um, or how about loader percent percentage. And we'll set this to something like 10 rem and we'll set the color to be our primary color here. And I'm just gonna fix the height a little bit there, the line height. So I think that's good so far. And then the last thing we need is another div. And this is going to be our progress bar. So we've got our progress bar. Let's go ahead and select loader wrap and actually switch this from horizontal to vertical flex. And this progress bar, I want to have it span 100% of the width and then we'll grab the loader and give it some padding, I don't know, four rem on all sides, just like that. So now our progress bar isn't hitting the edges and we can give it a little bit of height too. We'll give it 10 rem just so, actually that's way too big. We will give it three rem so that it's more visible. And actually I think it should be even smaller, two, one, sure, why not one? And then we'll give this the background color of white. And we're going to animate the scale property on this. So let's come on down to the transforms and we can see if we come over to scale, I'm going to click this lock icon to undo that. And then as we start scaling down, it's coming from the middle, which you might want that effect, but I actually want it to come from the left. So I'll change the transform settings to be from the left here, 0%, top 50%. And we'll come back in here and then we can see if we scale it down to zero. That's how we want it to start, right? But notice we have both the Y and X because I need to click this lock icon again. And then we can bring just the X down, just like that. Now, two things that are important to configure is we wanna be able to work on the site without having this loader taking up all the space here. So on our loader wrap, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click display and none so that it completely goes away. If you ever wanted to work on it again, just go back to display flex, not block. And so, but we'll leave it on display none for now. And then we also wanna make sure that the body is not scrollable while the loader is playing. So we can actually set that up inside of our page settings. If I come down here to our gear icon, I'm just gonna drop in a few things inside of the head tag here. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load some code from my local machine. We'll get writing this code in just a second, but it's called imagesloaded.js is the file that I'm working in. And then I'm also setting some custom CSS right here for the initial styles. Now I wanna set the body's overflow property to hidden to make it so that it doesn't scroll when the loader loads. And I wanna set the loader wrap to display flex. 
that's going to make it default to flex rather than none, which is how we have it in designer, so that when the page loads, that loader shows first. So let's go ahead and save this. Yep, so I have loader percentage here, but we need to set this to loader percent just like that. And now we can publish and get working on our code. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our code. So I'm gonna start by loading the images loaded library from Skypack CDN. And we're gonna get the GSAP library too, which we're going to use for our animations. Now I'm interested in tracking how long it takes to load all these images. So I'm going to use performance.now to create a timestamp and store it in a value start. We don't need this for the code to work, but I think it's nice to log it out to console as we're doing development work. All right, next we're going to instantiate a new instance of the images loaded class. So we're calling the constructor here using the new keyword on images loaded, which is coming from up here. Then we can give it a CSS selector here. I'm passing the body, but you could pass any sort of class or attribute or ID, whatever, but we want to look at all the images on this page. So we'll pass body here. We also wanna be sure to look for background images, which I'm not using in this example, but we'll set background to true to look for background images. And finally, we have a callback function to run once all of the images are loaded. So we haven't defined that yet, but we will in just a second. Next, we have num images. So we wanna get the total number of images, which we can get from the images loaded instance. And then we get the images property on that and then the length property on that. So now we have the total number of images. Next, we'll scaffold out two important functions and that's the progress function and our on images loaded function. Now this is tapping into the images loaded events API with the dot on call here. And then we're passing the string progress. And now what this takes is a callback function that has as parameters, the instance and the image. The instance is basically the same thing as images loaded variable up here. And then the image is going to be the current really image that's being loaded. So the progress of that image. Now, if all of these callback functions have you a little bit confused and you wanna know how to pass functions to other functions in JavaScript, then you should definitely check out my JavaScript and Webflow course that's over in Patreon. I've got over 30 lessons and each one has a video and an assignment and a Webflow project associated with it so that you can get your hands-on experience with JavaScript inside of Webflow right away. Anyways, let's hop right back to the code. And inside of here, we're gonna to want to set a variable, name it result, and we'll look at the is loaded property that lives on the image that we're getting in the parameter here. We're using a ternary now. If that returns true, then we'll go ahead and store loaded into the result variable. Otherwise, we'll return the string broken into the result variable. We can go ahead and console log this status. So we'll just get the progress count that lives on the image. So this is like image one of seven, two of seven, three of seven, and we'll just log the total number of images here and then say whether it actually loaded or broke. Next, we'll create a variable called progress, which will just be the progress count. So the image that we're working on right now divided by the total number of images. So it gives us a percent in like, if we're 30%, then this will be 0.3. And so next we're going to select our loader percent element on the page using query selector. We'll get the text content on that and then we'll set it to progress times 100. And we'll go ahead and round that so that we don't have any decimal points. And we'll add a little percent sign at the end, which is what we're doing right there with this template literal syntax. Next, we'll set up our progress bar animation. And to do that, we'll use gsap.2. We'll tell it to look at our progress bar class, and then we'll specify our tween variables in here. And the thing that we want to tween is that scale X property. And we want to tween it to a value of progress, which again, we calculated up here. Next, once all the images are loaded, we want to go ahead and get rid of our loader wrap. So what we'll do in here is that we'll actually set the end and we'll call performance.now again. And we can go ahead and console log that out to the console so that we can see the total time it took for us to load all of the images. And then next we'll have another gsap.2 tween. So now we're gonna look at that class loader wrap and our tween variables are going to be y% percent, setting it to negative 100 so that it goes all the way above the viewport and out of our view. And then we're also going to use a function here on complete. So on complete gets triggered whenever this tween completes and it gets a function that we can see right here. And all we need to do in there is re-enable scrolling of the body by calling gsap.set on the body and we'll set overflow to auto. Remember we set it to hidden within our page settings earlier. Anyways, that's all we need to do. So we'll save and check out the result. Now these images are all loaded and cached. So our progress bar is happening super fast. Basically everything is loaded right away. And you can just double check this again, we'll come to the network tab and you can set the throttling to fast 3G and I'll just refresh. And now it's gonna take actually forever to get this thing going. So I'm just gonna sit here and watch this loader go. And now as that progress is happening, if we come over to the console, we'll see that all those images are being logged out. Now we might wanna make sure that the loader wrap actually stays on for at least a second. So something we can do to do that is calculate some remaining time. And to do that, what we'll do is we'll set 
1000 milliseconds here into a constant variable called min time. Next, we'll get our duration, which is just end minus start. Remember, we already set those using performance.now. And then we'll calculate our remaining time using math.max. So this will return either zero, or if it's already taken more than a second, then this will return some sort of negative number. So it'll either be something greater than zero, but less than 1000 milliseconds or zero. And then we can just add a delay property to this tween right here. Now we'll go ahead and save that. So that's improved, it's a little bit less jarring. I think the last thing to do to really improve this would be to make actually the numbers count up just a little bit slower, but that's a little bit beyond the scope of this lesson, so maybe I'll cover that in a future video. Anyways, if you liked the lesson, be sure to like and subscribe because that really helps me, and I'll see you in the next video.